do have one other thing. There's a food secure program. For people that are in need of food, we're going to post this up back here in the bulletin board. But if you know anyone, ask them to come by and take a look at this. It tells you how to get online and let people know that these people know that you need food and uh, they'll provide. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> I'm going to let you all help me this morning. Uh, I am finishing out a, another degree, uh, my bachelor's degree. Uh, so this morning's service will be recorded. And I've got to load it to my professor. All kinds of other blessings that there is in ministry. And uh, your learning never stops, unfortunately. But uh, praise the Lord, in May I'll be graduating with a bachelor's degree out of Holmes, which is the oldest uh, Pentecostal Bible school or Bible college in the world. Uh, so I uh, thank the Lord for that blessing and being able to uh, to partake and eat from the master's table. Mm -hmm. This morning, I want to bring to you a message coming out of Mark chapter 1 and beginning in verse 3. Have you been blessed this week? Amen. Seems like it gets better and better as the days go by. Sweeter and sweeter. Out of the Gospel of Mark here, chapter 1, and beginning in verse 3, the Bible reads unto us, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. And then verse 4, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all of the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel hair and with a girl of a skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey. Do you think John would be welcome in the church this morning? Uh, compared to what some people look at us and some people think about us. If a man was to walk into our church this morning dressed in camel hide And munching on some locusts. Think about the reaction we might just have as people today. Of a church. Verse 7. And preached saying. There cometh one mightier than I after me. The latchets of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I have indeed baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. I want to preach this morning on a message entitled The True Nature of of repentance let's pray together father lord we thank you this morning for the opportunity god lord to gather in your house of prayer lord with your people god lord we ask you this morning god lord that you'll help us lord be with us sustain us in these troublesome days but father lord you've heard those prayer requests we've already mentioned but father lord we know that you're more than able to touch to heal to deliver so, Father, Lord, this morning, God, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you'll just touch me, God, Lord, this piece of clay. God, Lord, I know and I stand before you. I know that I'm nothing. But, Father, Lord, I ask you, Lord, that you'll just help us, strengthen us, and unify us in love this morning. God, Lord, we'll not fail to praise you, but we'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Repentance is something a lot of people steer away from. But repentance is necessary for us all. Repentance is a sincere surrender. Not unto the devil, but unto God and unto him alone. 
Ye must repent. You've got to repent. It's a thing that must be done. Speak Jesus in all situations. We encounter a lot of things in today's world, but we've got to learn how to speak Jesus and weave him into everything that happens. I've had to learn that in my life. I get into some of the most critical situations that people can ever encounter. I show up to people's houses at the worst times of their life many times, and I've had to learn how to weave Jesus into the midst of chaos. Into the midst of uncertainty, I've had to learn how to weave Jesus into those situations. But you know what? If you'll get Jesus into those situations, everything will be all right. If you can get his name mentioned at least one time, you'll feel a peace that surpasses all understanding. And Jesus will take control of the chaos in your life. We need to train our children. Those children Sister Bali just talked about this morning. That ain't here yet, but they're on the way. We need to learn how to train them in the ways of the Lord. We need to learn how to minister effectively to the children so they get an urge and a hunger for the Word of God and want to come to church. They want to come to Sunday school. And uh, it, it's amazing in, in today's world. But we as a church, we need to become innovative of how we can draw people to the church. It's not an easy job. Uh, even at my local church there, I am... Uh, we did a six-week Bible school study, and it is hard. It's like they say pulling eye teeth back home to get anybody to come to church, much less Sunday school, because that's a 945 ordeal. Heaven help us. But, uh, but regardless, at some point or another, even the youth will have to repent. Even us older in age, we have had an encounter of repentance. We've learned that mama can't repent for us. We've learned that daddy can't repent for us. Grandma can't pray and, and repent for us. It's something we've got to do ourselves. But the choice of repentance is centered around one thing and that is being of total surrender. That's not holding on to the world and holding on to Jesus too. It is simply saying, Lord, you're my everything. God, Lord, I surrender my entire life unto you and to you alone. And you know what? That's what a lot of people are encountering in today's world. They're wanting this. They're wanting the life. But they're saying, I don't want to let go of this quite yet. But let me tell you this morning, there is a peace that happens in your life. Once you say, Lord, I'm all yours, I'm all in. And, and you want to wave that white flag of surrender and just say, Lord, I don't know what you're doing in my life, but God, Lord, take control. And let me tell you, when you let him take control, when Jesus takes the wheel, my Lord, what a ride you're going to be on. It's going to be rocky sometimes, but you got to hold on. It's going to be not the easiest life. I can't stand before you this morning and say, if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, that you're going to live a bed of roses because I'd be lying to you. Because once you get in this work, it is a fight. It is a battle. Amen. You've got to put on the armor of God and you've got to fight every morning you wake up. Every evening you go to bed. You've got to hold on to Jesus more than you ever have before. God is in the forgiving business. You have to repent regardless who you are. Regardless of where you come from. Repentance is necessary. If, if your bank account this morning is blessed beyond measure, you still got to repent. If the bank account, if the bank don't even know you, or you owe them fortunes, you still got to repent. Repentance is centered out of the Greek base word with the meaning of one bearing the description of a lifetime forsaken of sin. It touches your mind, your will, and your emotions. Let me tell you, when you do 
earnestly and honestly repent, your will changes. Your direction of life changes. You serve God now and you turn from the evil things. Your emotions will change. God will begin to humble you. Sometimes you'll cry and you'll not know what you're crying about. Sometimes you'll just weep alone and say, Lord, it's just me and you. And you'll have communion with the Lord like you never have before. But let me tell you, when that true repentance comes, like the old Thomas said, you're going to hate what you used to love. And you're going to love what you used to hate. The psalmist said in 51.5, Behold, I will shapen in iniquity. I was shapen in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. <clears throat> this scripture traces all the way back to Adam in the garden. Everyone this morning is born in sin and has a sin nature. Therefore, the second man, what we call him the last Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ had to come into this world and, un, and in united sacrifice like no man could ever do. But you know what? That sacrifice, he walked perfectly. He walked sinlessly. And yet there was a price that had to be paid with a debt that only he could pay. And that was at Mount Calvary. I don't know about you. But I get excited when it gets about Easter time. I love talking uh, about the resurrection. If it weren't for the resurrection. Where would we be this morning? If it wasn't for the resurrection. Where would we be this morning? If he was still in the tomb like Muhammad is. If he was still in the grave like Buddha is. Where will we be this morning? But praise God this morning. I have went to the garden tomb. And it's empty this morning. Amen. I have seen it with my own two eyes. That there's no bones that lay in that, in that sepulcher. Uh, that there's no bones in that tomb set. But yet it's an empty slab. And you know what? Even before I saw it. I still believe it. That's what we have to do this morning. When we realize that we have truly become a new creature in Christ Jesus, we need to realize furthermore that there's no organization, there's no denomination that can do what Jesus has done for us. But when you realize that you're lost, it is in that moment that you realize it's time to do something different in your life. So many people want to hold on to sin nature instead of repenting. Let me tell you this morning, there's something different about Jesus when you truly repent. We know this morning he was born of a virgin. We know this morning that he died on Calvary for our sins. We know this morning that the resurrection happened and he woke up. We know this morning that he's coming again. But you know what? In our hearts, we've got to believe what the book says. When all else fails, you've got to go back to the book. Amen. What the book says, I believe. Every jot and every tittle, from cover to cover, every word of this book, I believe. And I will stand and fight for it. John the Baptist, he was that voice crying in the wilderness. But let me tell you this morning, we need some John the Baptist in our present day. Crying in this wilderness of lost world. We need somebody crying out and saying, Jesus is still alive and well. And he's seated on the right hand of the Father. And furthermore, he's still saving. He's still delivering. He is still healing, and he can still be the God of your life if you'll let him. But furthermore, God's called others to prayer warriors. 
Let me tell you this morning, we still need some prayer warriors. Thank God somebody prayed for me when I didn't know how to pray for myself. Thank God for grandmamas that are praying. Thank God for grandpas that are praying. Let me tell you, there was a time in my life when I didn't know it. I didn't know the one I preach about this morning. But furthermore, let me tell you that somebody did. And somebody kept lifting my name in prayer like we do with our prayer list. I, I enjoy how y'all read the prayer list every Sunday. A lot of churches don't do that. But that brings remembrance to us as a congregation of how critical the prayer need is in our community. And every time that we call out those names, I believe heaven's bells are ringing. And furthermore, our lost loved ones that you all have that are connected with this church. If all of our lost loved ones would come in, we'd have to build another church, I believe. But you know what? We've got to keep praying for them. We've got to keep ringing those prayer bells of heaven and saying, God, yes, they aren't in yet, but they're on the way. And keep calling out their name in prayer. And don't quit knocking on heaven's door on their behalf. Because tonight may be the night they meet it. Tonight may be the night. But you know what? If you really receive true salvation, church, there will be a change. And you'll know it. When Jesus came, he said in Matthew 3 and 2, and, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then we see where Paul said over in Romans 2 and 4, Or deepest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. And in Hebrews we see in 12 and 17, For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. <laughs> Think about that. Repent now. Don't put it off. That's what I tell my loved ones every day. Repent now. Don't put it off. We're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised the next second. But I tell you what, if we do something now, you won't regret it tomorrow. Amen. If our lost loved ones do something now and repent, they'll never regret it. I've never heard one regret coming to Christ in my life, in, in my career. Uh, I've never heard someone say, I wish I would have never done it. But you know what we hear instead? We hear, why didn't I do it sooner? Why didn't I meet him sooner? Lord, why did I take so long to meet you at an altar of prayer? It's always regret of why. But Lord, let me tell you this morning, I love him. With everything I've got in me, every ounce, every pound, all 300 some pounds of me loves him this morning. Praise the Lord. And, and each day gets sweeter and sweeter. But you know what? There is that story of Hezekiah being that king in Judah. When he arrives on, on scene, it is at an all-time low. And he has gone in the temple and, and cut up the vessels and destroyed the idols and cut off the lights and so on from there. Even Hezekiah's father nailed shut the door of the temple. He's gone so far in sin that he's even replaced idols in the same temple room to worship over that which he should be worshiping. Mothers and fathers at this time, they're sacrificing their children to the world. They're teaching them unclean things and the devil's enjoying every minute of it. 
But then we see when Hezekiah arrives on the scene, he starts to change things. He enters into the temple and gives order. He gives order to get the filthiness out of the church or out of the temple. Claim the temple and you'll see a change in your life. And he started to build the altars back. This morning, we need to start building some altars back in our lives. This morning, we need to start reestablishing prayer time. This morning, we need to start really concerning ourselves and say, God, I need you more than I ever have before. Amen. Sometimes, even as Christians, not saying we're lost this morning, but even as Christians, we need to say, God, forgive me. Amen. Lord, I know that somewhere in my life I have displeased you. But Lord, forgive me. God, I love you. And I'm asking that if there's anything that stands between me and you, oh God, Lord, forgive me this morning. That simple prayer of repentance is needed a lot of times in our lives. You know who tells the most truth? The mirror in your bathroom or in your living quarters. That mirror never lies. I want to tell you this morning, looking in a mirror sometimes is hard. Looking back on the past regrets, looking at where we are now in our lives, looking at what's going on around us. But let me tell you, with true repentance, you can look in that mirror and say, Lord, I know I'm not perfect, but Lord, I know that you've got me in the palm of your hand. He's like that potter's wheel. He's molding us. He's compressing us. Sometimes he's putting us in the fire. Sometimes he's just building us up. Sometimes he's just reconstructing us. But let me tell you this morning. Lord, take anything I have, but don't take the glory. Lord, I need you more this morning than I ever have before. I don't want to be like that one where the glory departed in Ichabod and so on from there. But instead, Lord, I want to be all yours and you be all mine. I have come to a realization this morning that without God, I am nothing. I've come to a realization this morning that I am nothing, once again, without Him. Amen. This morning, over in 2 Chronicles 29, And said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves, and sanctify the house of the Lord, God of your fathers, and carry forth the filthiness out of this holy place. For our fathers have trespassed and done that which was evil in the eyes of our God and have forsaken him and have turned their faces from the habitation of the Lord and turned their backs. Let me tell you this morning, there are some that have turned their backs on the Lord. There is some repentance that is necessary. Verse 7, also, they have shut up the doors of the porch and put out the lamps and have not burned incense nor offered burnt offerings in this holy place unto the God of Israel. Wherefore, the wrath of the Lord was upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he hath delivered them to trouble, to astonishment, and to the hissing, as ye have seen with your own eyes. For lo, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. Now it is in mine heart to make a covenant with the Lord, God of Israel, and his fierce wrath may turn away from us. 
My sons, be not ne negligent, for the Lord hath chosen you to stand before him, to serve him. And ye shall should minister unto him and burn incense. My God, that second Chronicles verse there that we just read, that was a term of repentance. That was saying, yes, they have destroyed the temple. Yes, they have put idols in the temple. Yes, they have nailed the doors of the temple shut. Yes, they have let the lamps burn out. Yes, they have not allowed any burnt offerings or sacrifices. But then it's saying, hey, but it's time for us to turn our processes back to the true God of Israel. It is time for us to open up the temple. It's time for us to begin burning the incense and burning the sacrifices. It's time for us to repent and say, God, we're sorry. We recognize where we're at in this current situation. And God, we need you to turn the tide. Lord, is that your prayer this morning? God, turn the tide in my life. Though you may be establishing and having troubles in your life, sometimes you just got to reach out and say, God, this morning, I need you more than I ever have before. Sometimes in life, it, life is hard. And I'm only 31 years old. I can say life is hard. Hey, if you can't tell, I've already lost my hair. That's gone. Uh, but uh, in all sense, in all true sense, life is not easy in today's world. Amen. We are running in, in people that are passing away left and right. Just the uh, yesterday morning, uh, I believe it was yesterday morning, pronounced a 24-year-old dead. Life is hard. When you're having to tell a mother, a father, if their son or daughter is deceased beyond help, life can get hard. But let me tell you this morning, but yet life is hard. But in this hard life, there's peace. Amen. In this hard life, there is a peace that surpasses all understanding. When the world is crashing down all around you, you can stand and say, God, I know you're in control. When you tell the doctor to remove that life support, you can stand and say, God, I know you're in control. When, you, when they come and put the foreclosure sign on your house, and now you are homeless. God, I know somehow, some way you're in control. You've got to have the faith in you that no matter what happens, no matter what the devil tries to attack you or kill you with, you've got to have the faith to say, God, I don't know what you're doing. Lord, I might not see you right now in the midst of this trouble, but God, I know you're with me. And God, I know that you're more than able to help me right now this morning. So Lord, I'm giving this situation over to you. That's what a lot of people do wrong. They want to hold the situation. They want to cater that baby and that trouble. But this morning you've got to say God. I give it. To you. Lord it's yours. I'm just going to be here and pray. Through it. And if you'll release it to the Lord. There's no telling what he'll end up doing. In the midst of your life. Amen. But you just got to hold on. Through whatever happens. And say God I'm grounded. And Lord I'm yours. But are you really his this morning? That is the final question in the true nature of repentance. God, am I yours? How do you know you're his this morning? Because you feel him. You feel him moving in the midst of your soul. You feel that peace that surpasses all understanding. You talk with him. You love him. You're in a relationship with Jesus. He's going to be your everything. But you've got to be his.
Sister Bonnie. We'll be going to number 126. And let's stand together and let's sing. pray together. Father, Lord, we love you this morning. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be together in your house. Father, Lord, we know that you are the rock of ages. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we have an avenue of true repentance this morning in Christ Jesus. But Father, Lord, this morning, God, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that once again you'll be with us as a people of God. Lord, strengthen us, unify us in love. And God, Lord, go before us. Help us establish our going in accordance to your will and your word. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives. Lord, we pray, God, Lord, that you'll just help us, lead us and guide us, and bring us back safely to your house when it is that time. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 